Today we are going to be setting up two absolutely beautiful naturalistic leopard gecko enclosures from start to finish. I honestly had a really fun time setting up these enclosures and I think that they turned out really well. I'm honestly very proud of them so I think that you guys are really going to enjoy seeing them and how I built it and hopefully you guys can get some inspiration from it as well. One of the main products I'm using to build these leopard gecko enclosures is this Exoterra Stone Desert Substrate. This substrate substrate does come in three different colors, however, I am just going to be using the Sonoran Ochre. This is a product that I have never tried before, but I am really, really looking forward to it. So I do just want to say a big thank you to Exoterra for sponsoring this video and sending me a few bags of substrate to test out. So let's just go ahead and start building a leopard gecko enclosure. The very first thing I'm doing is just cleaning out the enclosure. To do this, I'm just using vinegar water and some paper towels. Now that the enclosure is clean, it's time to go ahead and install this Universal Rocks background. To start off, I'm just going to be placing some silicone on the back of the background. And then once the silicone is placed, I'm just going to take the background and press it inside the enclosure and then I'm going to leave it for a few hours to cure. So the background is now installed and you may notice that there is a slight gap at the bottom of this. This is just because the tank and the background are slightly different dimensions. In order to fix this, I'm just going to take a little bit of spray foam and run it along the bottom to fill that gap. What I'm doing now is trying to figure out the structure of the enclosure. So I have my rocks here and I'm taking these and you know, just kind of figuring out where I want to put them. I'm going to be using scrap pieces of foam. This is actually a foam background that I know I'm not going to be using and rather than wasting it, you know, I'm gonna give it a purpose. So I'm going to be using these scrap pieces of foam to help build the structure and support the rocks. It might look a little bit ridiculous right now, but soon enough, all of this foam is going to be covered. You're not going to see any of it and it's going to add structure to the enclosure. So now that I have a little bit of a structure built with this scrap foam and the rocks, I'm going to be taking some great stuff spray foam and I'm going to be using that to further build the structure. So I'm basically just taking this spray foam and using it to cover all of the scrap foam as well as the rocks and then when the spray foam dries it's going to help create a better structure and it's going to keep all of the rocks and everything in place. This ensures that the rocks are well supported and aren't going to fall and possibly injure my animal in the future. Once all the foam is applied, you typically want to leave it for a day to fully settle and then you can start carving it. So I let the foam cure overnight and then I came back the next day with a razor blade to start carving away at the foam. My structure is complete and the foam has been placed and carved. This is what the enclosure looks like right now. Now that the foam has been carved, I'm going to take some dry lock and cover the foam. There's no secret to doing this. You basically just take a paintbrush and start painting it on. The reason I did this is to basically just seal the foam, if you would, and to give myself a better surface to work on moving forward. Since all of this is going to get covered, I'm only doing two coats. Once the dry lock is dry, it's super easy to scrape away from the glass if you need to. 
Now it's time for the exciting stuff. So now we're gonna go ahead and start playing with the Exoterra Stone Desert Substrate. So this substrate can be used dry or you can also wet it to create a bit of a clay that you can then use to create structures. I'm going to be doing a bit of both. To make things easier and try to prevent a big mess from happening, I took the substrate and emptied it out into a big bin. Now I'm just going to separate a bit of the substrate into a smaller bin so that I can mix it with water. When it comes to mixing the substrate with water, if you want to keep it looking really natural, it's best to use a very little amount of water. The more water you add, the more clay-like it's going to be. I personally still wanted it to have that very natural look to it, so I was very careful when adding water. So now that I have my substrate all mixed with water, I'm basically just going to take little handfuls of it and start pressing it onto the foam structure that I previously covered with dry lock. foam structure to be entirely covered with the substrate so ideally you won't see any of the foam or dry lock afterwards. The rocks however are still going to be left exposed. So there really is absolutely no secret to this. You just take your substrate and press it on and mold it how you want to. I'm not too worried about pieces falling onto the ground and stuff because those are just going to get used as substrate later on. And now that the structure is entirely covered with this stone desert substrate, this is what it looks like and I am very, very happy with it so far. Exoterra was kind enough to send me some forest branches along with the substrate, so I have some medium and small forest branches here, along with some Choya wood that I got from a local aquarium store, and I'm just going to be taking these and figuring out how I want to place them inside of my enclosure. So now that all of my wood is placed, I'm going to go and grab some dry stone desert substrate and start putting that inside of my enclosure. And then I'm going to be using this earth mix here to mix in with the stone desert substrate. I find doing this just gives it a bit more of a natural look. 
It's already a very natural looking substrate on its own, but personally, I just love how it looks with a tiny bit of dirt added into it. time to add our plants. So for now, I'm just doing fake plants and Exoterra was kind enough to send me two fake plants. And then I have a third one that I just got from the craft store that I'm going to be using. And lastly, I'm just going to add this water dish inside the enclosure. And here it is. Here is the final enclosure. I am absolutely obsessed with how it looks. I think it turned out amazing and I think that my gecko is absolutely going to love it. It. That is how I built that leopard gecko enclosure. Now you may remember though at the very beginning of this video I said that I was building two leopard gecko enclosures So you might be wondering where the other one is. Let's go ahead and take a look at that So right here is the second exoterra that I set up for my leopard geckos So despite saying second, this is actually the first enclosure that I built I decided that since I was using the new substrate, which I had never used before, I wanted to go ahead and try it, you know, off camera first. So that's what I did with this enclosure. And then I decided to film the second one now that I had a bit of experience with this substrate. So this enclosure was built um, basically the exact same way the other one was. Obviously they are both you know, unique, they have their own features and stuff, but they were built basically the exact same. You can see that I used spray foam here to build the structure, and then I used slate rocks and stuff, and you know, I built the uh, substrate up over top of the foam, and then I added the wood and the plants and everything that you see, so yeah, both of these enclosures were built basically the exact same way, and I'm really happy with how both of them turned out. You know. They they both look similar, but they have their own individual unique layout. So despite, you know, having the same overall like aesthetic to them, they are two very different enclosures, which I am personally really happy about. When I built this enclosure, I was basically documenting the entire process over on Instagram. So if you want to see a more detailed video on just like how I made this one specifically, I would suggest heading over to my Instagram account and looking in my story highlights and you will find it there. And there we go. So those are both of my new leopard gecko enclosures finished and I'm so, so happy with them. Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you may be wondering why I only built two leopard gecko enclosures when I have three leopard geckos. The reason for that is one of my leopard geckos, Pepper, has neurological issues, so her care is slightly different from my other two. So these two enclosures are going to be going to Sushi and Alani, and then I'm going to be working on an upgrade for Pepper in the near future that is, you know, more suitable to her specific care requirements. So now that I have used this Exoterra Stone Desert Substrate for my geckos enclosures, I wanted to talk about it quickly because I 100% believe that this was a product that has been missing from the reptile market for a long time and I'm so incredibly happy that it exists now. As you guys know, I now use this substrate on two different leopard gecko enclosures and I have zero complaints. I absolutely loved it. It was super, super easy to work with. And so far I also just love how it looks. I think it has an incredible naturalistic look to it. I would love to try out the other colors in the future because I am seriously impressed with the substrate. So far to me, it seems like it's going to be awesome to use both as, you know, for 
building a structure and also just on its own as a loose substrate. I haven't yet tested this substrate with my animals, so I'm not sure how they feel of that yet. I'll have to update you guys in the future, but as it stands right now, I am just seriously impressed with this substrate. I think that it is incredible. I will definitely be using it in a lot of my enclosure builds moving forward and I honestly do recommend it to anyone out there who is looking for a type of clay like substrate or arid substrate for your animal. So despite these enclosures being all done now I'm not yet putting my animals in them and that's just because I need to wait for some new um, heating devices to arrive. So once my new heating equipment arrives I'm going to be introducing my leopard geckos into their new enclosures and I'm going to be doing a whole other video on that so if you want to see my leopard geckos reactions to these new enclosures make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss that. Now that you guys have watched me set up the enclosures and you guys have gotten my thoughts on the exoterra desert substrate I am going to go ahead and end the video here. So once again thank you so much to exoterra for sponsoring this video and for sending me a few of the products that you saw featured in this video I do really appreciate it. If you're not already subscribed to my channel make sure you do that now as you don't want to miss more videos going forward you know you don't want to miss my leopard geckos getting introduced to their enclosure so uh make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications also be sure to check out all of my social media all of it will be down in the description below but it is basically just emma sam 99 on everything so please check that out i would love to have you guys over there with all of this said i'm gonna go ahead and end the video here thank you all so much for watching i do really really appreciate it and i will see you all in my next video.